Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'll be showing you how to draft an underbust corset. In this tutorial we'll be using the measurements from the previous tutorial titled How to Measure Yourself for Corset Making. You will also need a square, a ruler, paper like this one inch grid wrapping paper that I use but you can use whatever you have, a marking tool, I'll be using a pen but I recommend that you use pencil, a calculator, and of course our measurements. Start by making an X and a Y axis using the square. The Y axis should be the same length as our torso. In this case, 6 inches plus 3 inches. Your measurements may be different, so don't get hung up on the numbers. Just take whatever your waist to bottom hip measurement is and your waist to underbust measurement and add them together. Then mark 6 inches up for the waist and 3 inches up for the underbust and label them as such. Now on the x-axis, we're going to take our largest measurement. This will change depending on your body, but it's most often the hip. Since our hip is 37 in this instance, but we're only drafting for half the body and assuming we are symmetrical, that means we only need half of that circumference, which is 18.5 inches. So find 18.5 inches over on our x-axis and mark it. Now square that line up and over and form a box. Then we need to find the half of our half hip measurement, also known as our side, which is about 9 inches in this case, and square it up. We want to know the exact true side of our body in order to create the silhouette we want. Remember, the left y-axis is our center line at the front of our body, and the right y-x- <laughs> and the right y-axis is the center line along our spine. Now we need to decide how much of a gap we want in the back of the corset. You don't have to have a gap, but some people don't like the bones and grommets resting on their spine, so in this case we are adding a 2 inch gap. But remember again, we are only drafting for half the body. You'll see I made the mistake of drawing in a 2 inch gap, but if I were to make the corset, then it would have a 4 inch gap, which is much too large. So I go back and draw a 1 inch gap and label that side as grommets to orient us and scribble out the gap so I know it is just that. Now square over the waist. It's important to keep everything square so that it lays nice on the body, especially at the center front and center back of the corset where we'll be having flat steel bones that cannot bend to any curve. Now for some math. Since the hip is our largest measurement and everything else is smaller, that means we need to subtract from our waist and the underbust line. Therefore, find the halves of both the waist and the underbust and subtract them from our half hip measurement. So if the underbust is 14.5, subtract that from 18.5, which means we need to take 3.75 inches from the underbust. Apologies for the bird noises in the back, they don't like it when I talk. <laughs> If the waist is 13.25, subtract that from 18 and a half. That means we need to take 5.25 from <laughs> that means we need to take 5.25 from the waistline. Now that would be our final measurement for the waist if we just wanted it to sit flush on the body. But in this case, we want to reduce the waist to shape it. If you are a petite person, start with 2 inch reductions. If you are a softer figured person, then try for 4 inches. You can always reduce more in your next mock up. So, if we are reducing the waist 2 inches, then we need to add that to our amount reduced. But remember, just like the grommet mistake, we are only drafting half the body, so that 2 inches should really be 1 inch added to the 5.25 we need to take out, making the total amount we need to reduce the waistline 6.25 inches. Now let's get to reducing. Because we're altering the figure's silhouettes on the side, I like to take most of my reduction for the waist and underbust from the side. Therefore, I'll be taking an inch out on each side of the side seam at the underbust, making sure that the side seam is balanced and mirrored for a smooth side. Then I'll be taking three inches from the waist, an inch and a half balanced on each side. Now, when connecting these two lines, it's important to keep in mind the shape you want. If you want the corset to cup your ribs, then this line should be curved in towards each other. If you want a straight rib, or conical, meaning cone-shaped, then you'll draw it straight. Here I drew a conical rib. 
Also, how much of a curve you do or do not put at the waist flowing towards the hip will determine how angular or curved the waist is. Now, when we connect the waist to the hip, we need to remember three things. First, we don't have to reduce the hip since it's already at our natural measurements, meaning we will make the hip lines curve to meet the side seam. To determine the hip shape, we need to know what the desired silhouette is and draw just that. If you have sensitive hip bones or very prominent ones, this is where the circumference and vertical measurement of the iliac crest will come into play, as we discussed in the last video. You can use a French curve to make this smooth and symmetrical as well. However, if you don't have a French curve, you can easily print one off the internet to do your curves. Here I am just sketching it, but it is best to use a curve to get them symmetrical. From here, I determine how I want the front panel to look. If you have a busk or a zipper, make sure to account for the width of those, plus a supporting flat steel next to them, as well as a steel on each of the sides of the seam. In this case, we have a busk in mind, so I end the bottom of the first panel about two inches over, assuming that all the hardware adds up to about an inch and a half wide in total. As for the placement of the top of the seam, generally half the distance from nipple to nipple looks flattering, but you can make it any angle or distance you like, straight even if you so prefer. From there, I take more from the waist. I took more from the right side to keep the first panel's edge mostly straight so that there is very little curve in the stomach, since we are going for a flat tummy look here. However, the second panel's first side has more of a reduction and a curve to bring the waist in more, as when it is sewn to the first panel's edge, it will straighten out. Now we want to draft the back third of the body. I split the back into at least two panels to make sure it sits nicer around the curve of the body, but also to make room for sway backs. In the measurement video, I mentioned how it's good to take note of if you have a sway back or a large backside. If you do, then you may want to take a bit of a reduction out of this seam as well to accommodate the curve of the body. Also note how I connected the seam at the underbust, and that's because I thought I already took out what I needed already. If I had taken out more from the underbust, it would make the underbust fit improperly and make the lacing gap look like a V, which is an improper shape for the lacing panel. However, in this case, I did not take enough, so I fixed that. Also note how I made the connection at the hips a gentle curve. This is something to test in your mock-ups to see just how drastic of a curve you need to fit your body. Now I am marking how far down the back I want the bottom edge to be, referencing the measurements we took earlier. However, because we made the bottom torso length based on our longest measurement in the front of our body, I then had to blend the lines together. Keep in mind the shape you want at the bottom edge to be. It can be a gentle point like this, curved, straight, bat wing, scalloped, or more, you just have to draw it as such. Now we wanted a straight underbust, but let's say you wanted a pointed underbust. That's where the center front measurement would come in to help you determine how far up the point should go. Or if you want the back to come up higher, that is where you would use that measurement to draw the back by the grommets higher, making sure to slope it down to the edge of the side seam panel so that it doesn't impede the arm movement or cut into the underarms. Also, if you wanted the corset to have more panels than this, then you can divide the corset into the panels you want using the dashed lines I did, making sure to leave the side seam there. And from there, remove your reduction between however many panels you have. From here, you can cut this out and trace it onto your fabric, being sure to add seam allowance. I prefer to cut it out, paste it onto another piece of paper, and add a half inch seam allowance around it. Once you have done either of those, you are ready to start sewing your mock-up. I hope this helped, and if it did, consider sharing it with your friends and hitting that subscribe button. It would help me out a lot. Thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned for the next video where we go into the materials you need to start building your first corset. Thank you so much again. Remember, cosplay is all about having fun, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!